In applications, we often study the symmetry group of some object. So the object could be a geometrical object or a real physical object, or it could also be something microscopic like an atom or molecule. Let's consider this object here. I have this tennis ball and let's for a moment pretend that this is a perfect ball, round, nice. And let's also pretend that we can't distinguish distinguish yellow and orange. So it's just a ball, no colors, no letters, uh, lines or whatever on it. Then the symmetry group of this object would consist of all rotations. Rotations about any axis that goes through the center of this ball and then we can rotate by any angle. This leaves the object invariant. Remember, we pretend that we can't distinguish yellow and, and orange and there's also no line in between. So we can rotate about this axis or this, doesn't matter. So the symmetry group of this ball would be SO3. That's uh, the rotations in three space, any angle, any axis. Now Let's say there is a line here. There's this line between the yellow and the orange region on this tennis ball. It goes around here, one closed loop. And let's say we still can't distinguish yellow and orange, but we have this line here on the, on the tennis ball. So there are two regions on this ball. What's the symmetry group now? Now it's not an infinite group any longer as it was before. Now it's a finite group. We can take an axis through this point and the point at the, on the other side. And now we can rotate like this and then we get back the same configuration as before. But this, just rotating a little bit, wouldn't be, wouldn't be um, a symmetry operation any longer. Only the 180 degrees rotation would be a symmetry operation for this ball any longer. But since we can't distinguish yellow and orange, we can also do this. This is also a rotation. We ignore the words here. We just pretend there are no words written on this and we also pretend yellow is orange. So this brings us back to the same configuration as before and this brings us back to the original configuration. So in general, for symmetry groups of objects, the inverse is just undoing the operation. So we rotate a bit and then we rotate back. Here we see that the inverse of this rotation, inverse rotating back, is the same as rotating again. So there's the identity element, leaving, just leaving the ball as it is. Then there's this group element, there's this one, and there's its inverse. <coughs> so there are this is a group with four elements. Now if we switch on color and we say we can distinguish yellow and orange, we have these two regions on the ball, but they have different color, then this is no longer a symmetry operation. So the symmetry group of this red and yellow, this colored tennis ball, is a group with two elements. We can just leave the ball as it is, or we can rotate 180 degrees and the inverse of that is the same as rotating again. Okay, so we have, depending on how we define our ball, we have an infinite group, SO3, or we have, an, have a group with four elements, or we have a group with two elements.